On the 20th of April 1980, two friends, James and John, walked into their local convenience store to purchase a pack of beers. Unbeknown to the shop assistant that night, these men would be taking a lot more than just beers. This simple act rapidly developed into a deadly dispute, taking the lives of two innocent victims and causing the third to sustain life-threatening injuries. James Autry was sentenced to death for his crimes. Today I'll be making his last meal on death row, which was a hamburger, french fries and Dr Pepper, while I reveal everything that happened on that fateful night and the events leading up to it. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to The Final Feast. I'm Natasha Diamond. I'm really interested in true crime. I love to bake and I have a weird fascination with what convicts choose to eat as their last meal on death row. So that's what I do here. I make my own version of their last meal on death row and I talk about their crimes. All the recipe links will be in the description box below. So if you want to try it out, then of course have a go and let me know in the comment section what you think. Now, let's turn up the heat on this killer cowboy, James Autry. James David Autry was born on the 27th of September 1954 in Amarillo, Texas in the US. He was one of six children to parents Jim Autry and Shirley Stucker. Growing up, James's home life was far from happy. He received regular beatings and fought often with his parents. He spent his childhood in and out of Texas reform schools and was first put behind bars at only 11 years old for shoplifting. By the time James was 13, he ran away from home where he continued his life of crime. Law officials labelled James a chronic offender as he spent most of his adult life in prison. In 1972, he was incarcerated for assault and attempted robbery. And then in 1975, he was sentenced again, this time for burglary. On his release from prison, James worked as an oil field worker and was described as shy and boyish. He kept himself to himself, relying heavily on drugs and alcohol, which became a big part of his life. This may have contributed to the reason he wasn't able to maintain long-lasting personal relationships. By 1980, James was living in a mobile home with his roommate, John Alton Sandifer. He was 25 years old at this time and still working as a labourer. On the evening of the 20th of April, James and John took a trip to their local second pack store in Port Arthur, Texas to buy a pack of beers. They drove down in the 1978 El Camino that they had borrowed from John's brother, Mark Sandifer, and armed themselves with a 32 caliber and a 38 caliber Smith & Weston pistol that they had taken from John's parents' home. The store clerk on duty that night at the second pack was a 43-year-old mother of five named Shirley Druitt. As James placed the beers on the counter to purchase, an unsuspecting Shirley said, that will be $2.70. To this, he responded, Here's your $2.70 before holding up a 38 caliber pistol and shooting Shirley at point blank range right between the eyes. He then turned the gun on the two customers in the shop at the time to prevent any witnesses from going to the police. Former Roman Catholic priest Joseph Broussard was shot in the head and died instantly. He was only 43 at the time and trying to start a new life for himself. The third victim was 30 year old Greek seaman Anthanasius Svarnas. Fortunately, he survived his gunshot wound, but was left with permanent brain damage. As James and John fled the scene, taking their beers with them, James was spotted by a female witness who later identified him. Ethel Gobert was sitting in her car with her companion when they heard three gunshots. Following this, she saw James Autry run past them across the street in a well-lit area. However, she saw no weapon in his hand and no witnesses ever came forward to identify John. Ethel and her companion then returned to the second pack where they found the three victims and alerted the police. When investigators arrived, they found Anthanasios Svarnas lying seriously wounded in the car park. Shirley Druitt was still in a seated position at the till, but unfortunately she passed away shortly after the police's arrival. Joseph Broussard was lying on his back inside the store with a telephone in his hand. He had been shot in the head and neck, but the police were baffled as to what the motive of the crime was. The cash register was at a slightly off position, but no money had been taken from it, nor was there any cash machine from Shirley's purse or Joseph's wallet. The last item purchased on the till was a pack of cigarettes and nothing was missing from the shelves but that six pack of beer that hadn't been paid for. So were two innocent lives cruelly taken just for a pack of beer? Less than four hours after the crime took place, John entered the Port Arthur police station with his father, John Richard Sandifer Sr and brother Mark Sandifer and handed the two pistols into the police. 
one of which being the murder weapon. John confessed to his part in the crimes and all three men explained in their own words the events leading up to that night. Mark stated that he'd been out on a drive with his wife Judy Francis Sandifer and their children at around 9pm as they drove past the local Sackham Pack. They noticed James Autry leant up against the El Camino Mark had lent to John earlier that day. He was already annoyed with his brother for taking so long to return his car so he pulled up alongside James and asked him where he was. James informed Mark that John was in the store and shortly after this he exited the building. Mark and Judy reported that neither had seen a body lying wounded in the car park. The men agreed that Mark would drive his car behind the El Camino and follow John back to his trailer where he could then take his car home. For this journey James sat in Mark's car. He drove only a short distance before James asked him to stop the car. As Mark pulled over James pulled a pistol out from under his shirt before exiting the vehicle and running in the opposite direction back towards the store. Once they reached the trailer Mark drove the El Camino back home and Judy drove their car. Shortly after this encounter, Mark returned to the trailer with his father, John Senior, this time to retrieve the two pistols his father stated had been taken without his permission from his home. When returning the weapons, they divulged that James had confessed that he killed people that night, saying, I just killed four people and you know it. A warrant for James Autry's arrest was put out and in the early hours of the following morning at 1.45am, he was arrested at the trailer he shared with John. James denied everything and gave his consent for the police to search his home. At the station, James gave conflicting accounts of the events that had taken place the day before. First, he signed a written statement blaming John for the shooting. Then he changed his story and took shared responsibility for what happened. However, later that afternoon, on the 21st of April, at 10 past 1, an officer overheard James on the phone to his mother confessing to the crime. He told her that he'd gone to the store with the intention to commit robbery, but it had gone wrong and once he'd begun shooting he just couldn't stop. He assured her that he was going to get out of it so she needn't worry. At trial, Autry filed a motion to suppress the conflicting written statements he had given. This was because they found that the police had not honoured his request to remain silent. Although this was granted, they denied Autry's motion to suppress the oral statements he was overheard making to his mother over the telephone. Mark Sandifer, Judy Sandifer and John Richard Sandifer Sr. all testified in court and were given immunity. John Sandifer Jr. however was refused immunity for his eyewitness testimony. He took a plea deal in which he pleaded guilty to burglary and received 25 years. James himself had requested for John to receive immunity for his testimony as he wanted him to give evidence during his trial. Because this was denied, when John was called up to the stand during James's trial, he invoked the Fifth Amendment, refusing to answer any questions. An expert determined that the 38 caliber pistol that Mark and Judy had seen James running back to the store with was in fact the one used to shoot and kill Shirley Drewett. The jury found James Autry guilty of first degree murder and he was sentenced to death by lethal injection. On death row, James was nicknamed the Cowboy because he dipped snuff, read western novels and listened to country music. He spoke on the phone with his mother and brother Robert, who was in prison in Colorado at the time. James maintained his innocence and even petitioned to have his execution televised so that he could make it real for the public. He hoped that if people saw an actual execution, they may realise that the death penalty isn't right and help prevent others from receiving it. Of course, this was denied. After having multiple appeals denied, James Autry was strapped to the gurney in the execution chamber on the 4th of October 1983. He had needles in his arms and was only minutes away from the lethal injection when a stay of execution came through. This meant that the execution was temporarily suspended, although it was eventually reinstated to take place the following year. In the wake of James's last minute stay of execution, a 32-year-old housewife from Dallas named Mrs. Tadlock began corresponding with him through letters. They communicated for four months with the blessing of Mrs. Tadlock's husband and relatives. She told reporters that she felt sorry for James and had received 75 to 80 letters from him throughout this period. Before his execution, James gave five letters to officials to distribute to his mom, sister, Mrs. Tadlock and reporters from the Huntsville Journal and a wire service. The letters read, I am fixing to die and my God has a better place for me. My mother, brother, sisters and loved ones have been hurt tonight only. 
Sandivers can relax again. So who was punished tonight for claiming his innocence and again blaming John Sandifer? On the 14th of March 1982, 29-year-old James David Autry was put to death in Huntsville, Texas. He was the second execution that had been held in Texas since the state had reintroduced the death penalty in 1982. Mrs Hadlock was in attendance, talking tenderly to him from behind the glass throughout the 20 minutes that he was in the death chamber. Witnesses say they had an airy smile on his face as he passed. He declined any last words and his last meal was a hamburger, french fries and Dr Pepper. If you've hung around this far then thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll be serving up more true crime next week so of course like and subscribe so that you don't miss out. And until next time, enjoy every meal as if it was your last. <laughs>